Well, hello, welcome to part three of this series on using Desmos to absolutely crush the SAT math section. Before we start, I just wanna thank you for being here and I wanted to welcome you to, uh, to join our course that we have online. I'll put a link in the description for that below. Right now we're running a coupon code. So if you're seeing this, you can use the coupon and get $100 off of our course where we're gonna practice a lot more of these strategies and see a lot of these questions. Every single question that we're gonna go through today comes from the course that we built at Method Learning. And if the video is helpful, then I can assure you that the course is also gonna be helpful. So more details will be in the description below. I also ask you to share this video with as many people as you can, just so that more people can see these strategies and know how um, helpful Desmos is gonna be on the new digital SAT. So let's jump right in. The first question here is talking about a plumber. He charges an upfront cost, it's a one-time fee, and then an hourly fee. For three hours, he charges 295. For five hours, he charges 425. And we wanna find the function that models this scenario. You might notice these are all linear functions, they're all lines. Um, there's many ways you can do this, but of course we wanna focus on using Desmos. So how are we gonna do it using Desmos? Well, one of the options is we can add in a table. And I'm gonna just notice that these are both points, or when I say both of these, what do I mean by that? X is the number of hours, and so three is our X, and 295 is the charge, which is like F of X. And remember, F of X and Y mean the same thing. And so really we've got, if I just write it on here, um, well, I can't write it on, on this thing, but we've got two points, right? So the point is three comma 295, that's X and Y or X and F of X. And then the next point they give us is five with 425. And in Desmos, I can now hit this zoom button and it's gonna, if I move my, my face, you can see that it zooms the screen just to those two points so that you could see them a little bit easier. Okay, and now what you can do, I'll move myself back down here, is you can write this in Desmos. You could say Y sub one, if you've seen our other videos, you know how I did that. I'm just gonna hit Y and then shift and the minus sign. It's gonna do the little subscript so that I can put a little one down there. And it's gonna say Y sub one, and then I'm gonna say is approximately, so shift and then the button next to one on my keyboard. So Y sub one is approximately M X sub one, and then tab over or arrow over plus B. Now you should recognize that as Y equals MX plus B, the equation of a line, but I'm using Y sub one and X sub one because that's the names that they gave it in the table, okay? And this is approximating the equation of the line through those two points and you can see Desmos tells us right here, M is 65. So the slope of the line is 65. That's either C or D at this point. And the B value, the Y intercept is 100. So that tells us the answer has to be D. Okay, so Desmos can figure out any equation of a line through any points like this. Make the table, do this formula here, and that'll become second nature as you do a couple of these types of problems. And Desmos can do that really, really quickly. Okay, let's take a look at another question. So here's another one. It says that N is a constant, and it says which of the following values of N makes this system above have exactly one intersection point in the XY plane? So let's type these in just like we see them. And there is a nice parabola, it's upside down. We could have known that just because there's a negative in front as the leading coefficient, negative one. And then we type in the other one, Y equals 10x plus n. Okay, so you see that it popped up that slider, which you've seen if you've seen our videos before. And what we can do is if we want, we could click that and we can drag this n value. And you can see that the blue line is moving as I move the slider. But the problem is that these values aren't working because we need it to intersect in one point. And so I'm gonna have to change the slider. And I could do that. I could just type in maybe negative three, which is our smallest value and I can make it go all the way up to 71. Okay, and that'll allow me to do it, that's fine. Or what I could do is I could just manually here type in n equals, well you could see negative three, I could change it to n equals 29, 
And you can see when I do that myself, maybe it's easier than sliding it. It's up to you, you could decide. And as I change these end values, I could eliminate A, because A didn't work. B, 29, also didn't work. It's not intersecting in just one point. Maybe I need to move my, myself so that you could see that these intersect in two points, right? What about 59? Ooh, that looks like it works. I could zoom it in and you could see that these graphs intersect in that one point. And I would stop right there because the N value that makes this work is 59 and I get C. The other thing I could have done is I could have taken this out and I could have just changed the N value here by typing in, you know, 29, 59, same thing, and I'll get the same answer. Okay, so the answer here would be C. Let's go to the next question. It says, um, here's g of x, five times two to the x. And it says that if f of x, which is a new function, is g of x plus six, which of the following equations defines this new function f? So technically they did give us f right here. It's g of x plus six, but we wanna write it in a different way where it's not like depending on g, if that makes sense. Okay, so how could we do this? Well, first of all, I'm gonna just type in g of x equals five times two to the x. Okay, I have to type it in fully like that with the g and everything. And then I'm gonna say f of x is equal to g of x plus six. All right, now you might notice that that blue graph, f of x, is just a shifted over to the left version of g, and it's shifted over six because of the plus six here in the parentheses. But that isn't quite helpful enough because we still need to figure out which of these is another way to write f, essentially. So what I would do is I'm just gonna type in each of these answers. And remember, we want it to match up or to, to be the same as f, which is the blue graph. So I'm actually gonna hide g by tapping this thing up here. Okay, I could toggle that on and off and it, it notice it hides g. So I don't wanna get distracted by g and I wanna find now the graph in the answers which matches up with this blue graph, right? If I type in, let's say 11 times two to the x and it matches up with the blue one, well, that's obvious that that is the same function as f, right? So let me do that. So let me try out these answers by typing them in. Okay, first you could see that a must be wrong because we need it to overlap with our blue graph f. So a doesn't work. What about b? 30 times two to the x. I'm just gonna change 11 and swap it out with 30. That also doesn't work because it needs to overlap with the blue graph. B is also wrong. What about 60? Also wrong. Let's change it. Now we know D must work. Let's see what happens when we type in 320 times two to the x. Sure enough, there you go. Watch now, I can just kind of see that if I turn it off, turn it back on, they overlap each other, showing us that D, 320 times two to the x, must be the right answer. Let's go to a new one. It says that B here is a constant for which of the following values of B will the equation have more than one real solution? So let's type it in and then I'll explain what we're gonna look for and what it kind of is talking about here. So I'll type in the full equation just like I see it. Notice that if I put it in with the equal zero, Desmos gives us this exclamation point, it says we only support implicit equations of x and y. So basically, Desmos doesn't like this because there's no y in it. So all I'm gonna do, there's a trick here, is I can just take out the equal zero, okay? And it's, it's okay now. The only problem is that it doesn't have a b value. That's the problem now, okay? It says try defining b. So we can just simply do the slider for b, which would work, or we can do what we saw a couple questions ago, where we can just take out the B and literally just erase it and plug in each of these individual values to test each one. So for A, you could take out the plus sign and put in minus 126, okay, something like that. And then I would just zoom it out so I could see the graph. Okay, there's the graph, it's a parabola. It doesn't touch the X axis. So what are we looking for? That's a good thing to think about. It says, we want this to have more than one real solution. Well, in the context of a quadratic, right, a parabola, a solution is an x-intercept. So we want this graph to cross the x-axis. Unfortunately, and we wanted to do it more than one time, right? It says 
have more than one real solution. So we want it to cross twice. This graph doesn't, so that shows us A is wrong. Let's swap out that B value for the one in answer B, negative 67. Uh-oh, it went even higher, so B can't be right either. Cross that out. What about C? What if B is 10? Let's make it positive 10. That also doesn't work because it's up too high. What if it's 168? Obviously this should work, let's see what happens. Sure enough, I type in 168 for B, and if I zoom back in, I could see that the graph crosses the x-axis twice, aka it has more than one real solution, and that's my B value, 168. What about the next one? All right, this one's fun. We have a table, x and y, and it says that this table gives the coordinates of two points in the xy plane, and then it says, and this is important, the y-intercept of this line that goes through, um, presumably, yeah, the y-intercept of the line, of this line, is m plus 1 comma n, where m and n are constants, and they want to know what the value of n is. So it seems like maybe we don't have enough information. However, we have to remember that any y-intercept has the same x value every single time. It's 0. Right? If you think of a point on the, on the y-axis, whether it's this one up here, that's 0, 10, or this one here, 0, 5. Any point on the y-axis for the y-intercept has to have a x-coordinate of 0. Right, So that means that this number here, m plus 1, is really equal to 0. What does that mean m equals? m has to be negative 1, because negative 1 plus 1 would give us that 0 that we're looking for in the place of x. Okay, so m is negative 1, and that helps us now to figure out in our table that the table is really not m and 14, but it's really negative 1 and 14. Remember, m has to be negative 1 to make this x value 0 because it's a y-intercept. Okay, and if m is negative 1 here, then the next point becomes negative 1 plus 8, which is negative 7, or sorry, positive 7, right? Negative 1 and 8 is 7, and then the y value, it says there is negative 10. So we'll zoom out. We see our points there on the picture, and it says, what is the value of n? Now notice in this point here, which was the y-intercept, the n is the y value at the y-intercept. In other words, it is the y-intercept. So n is the y-intercept. The question is, where would the y-intercept be? If the line passes through these two points, where would it cross the y-axis? Let's see. Remember, we can do that trick again that we saw earlier in the video. y sub 1 is approximately equal to m times x sub 1 plus b. And there we have it. We could see that the y-intercept, if we go over to it, it's 0, 11. That means 11 would be the answer. We get d. Or if I move myself over, same thing here. The B value, the Y-intercept, is 11. Either way, we can find the answer. Once again, we get D. Let's move on. We've got a couple more. This one is very similar to one that we saw a little bit ago. And so this should just be kind of a review. And we'll do it the same way that we did before. So F of X is equal to 3 times 4 to the X power g of x, the new function, is equal to f of x plus 2. So again, that's a shifted over 2 version of the red one. I'm looking for g, so I'm going to hide the red one, f, just so it doesn't confuse us. And remember, we're going to try to match each of the answers to that blue function, that is g. So 9 times 4 to the x doesn't match the blue one, that was a. So that can't be right. What if I try B? Change that 9 to a 6. Also wrong. What about C? 5 times 6 to the X. Also wrong. And it seems like every answer we're getting, for whatever reason, is D. But it works this time. 48 times 4 to the X. You can see that it overlaps with the blue one, obviously. And we get D once again. OK, this is our last question. So let's do it and let's finish strong. We have this function 2x squared plus 9 
and it says which table gives three values of x and their corresponding values of f of x for the given function f. So we've got a couple options. Essentially what they're asking is which of these three points or which table has three points that are all on the graph of this function 2x squared plus 9. So let's type that in 2x squared plus 9 and you can see whoops I put 0 it's plus 9 there we go it's up 9 zoom it out so what we could do is we could physically just kind of go on Desmos and like drag this I'm, I'm clicking and dragging and you could see all of these are points on the graph and that's one option to find the ones that you're looking for like negative 1 11 is right there so the table with the answer um, the answer must have negative 111 in it and actually already we see that a has to be the answer it's the only one with negative 1 comma 11 but there's a quicker way so that you don't have to manually drag and get it really accurate you could go like this I'm gonna click this edit list button and I'm gonna type tap this table create table and look what it does it automatically creates a table based on the function I put in 2x squared plus 9 and so all of these pairs should be in the table in other words these are all points on that function and look sure enough negative 111 there it is in a 0 9 there it also is in a and 111 there it is so a has to be the answer if you saw a question like this and you did this strategy and you didn't see the point in this table that you were looking for let's say in the answers they had a point like 5 for the X you could just go to this table here and type in 5 and automatically you see what happens Desmos tells you the corresponding value of the function or the y value 59 okay so that's what you could do I could I could put in a, an x value of negative 13 and there's my y value 347 okay so this is a really good strategy to use in Desmos if you have a function and you want a table of points on the function remember what we did we just typed in the function click this gear edit list button up here and then the table picture and automatically it pops up Okay, so that's the end of this video. This was part three. You could find parts one and two if you haven't seen them yet. I'll link those in the description below. Remember to like and subscribe if you aren't already a subscriber. Share the video with as many people as you can just so that they could also see how powerful Desmos is. And remember that coupon for signing up for our course. I'll put that also in the description. That course is going to help you out and you're gonna get access all the way through the end of high school to this course as well as our ACT course. So best of luck to you and let us know if you wanna see more videos like this.